One of my favorite things about this guy right here, the Nintendo Switch, is that I have the ability to take console quality games with me wherever I want to go. And one of the things I really like to do is unwind at the end of the day in bed playing games. What's going on everyone? I'm Jay, my channel Square Pegs. Hit that subscribe button down below if you have not done so already. I do a couple of videos a week where I take a look at some of my favorite retro and modern games, and today we are looking at kind of a mix of both, because we've got some older games on here as well. But I think the Nintendo Switch is the perfect console for laying in bed and winding down at the end of the day. And I'm gonna give you 10 of my absolute favorite games to unwind at the end of your day. So I'm kicking things off on this list with one of my absolute favorite Wii U games that ported over to the Switch with Captain Toad Treasure Tracker. Now, first off, this game is just so damn wholesome because I mean, Toad's the best, I think we can all admit to that. And it's such a wonderful mix of casual exploration and puzzle elements that make the game nearly perfect to me. And the Switch version in particular is excellent because it adds levels inspired by Super Mario Odyssey, which I think is great. You play as Captain Toad, exploring levels to collect stars, collect coins, and find diamonds in order to be able to move to the next level. And as you go through, you'll need to dodge and avoid enemies or trick them into interacting with the environment and to destroy blocks for you to get past, all the while pulling levers and moving the environment around to solve the puzzle of the stage you're on. It's a logic puzzle where you need to think in three-dimensional space, and it's something that for me, at the end of the day, this is the kind of thing I want to do in order to exercise my mind a little bit. It allows me to relax, relieve stress, because if you lose, it's not a big deal. Go ahead and restart. It's got a truly pleasing color palette and excellent music, and it never feels intense to me. Even the boss fights don't go over the top. Nothing feels rushed, nothing feels aggressive. You're just playing an awesome puzzle game starring one of my favorite characters. Next up, it doesn't get more relaxing than Box Boy and Box Girl. And much like Captain Toad Treasure Tracker, this is on the list because it allows you to exercise your brain a little bit before you head to bed. You're going to kind of get those last snowflakes out of your brain a little bit with this one, and just get them out so you can work through these special puzzles to get yourself through the levels using Box Boy and Box Girl. Now, Box Boy started out on the 3DS, and its first entry here on the Switch is just a wonderful thing because you have 270 levels to play through. And it's not something where it's going to take a ton of time to get through. You can play three or four levels before bed just to relax a little bit. And the game is almost entirely monochromatic, so there's no bright flashing colors, no aggressive style lines, just simple shapes and puzzles to solve. It's a really subdued and relaxing game where you're able to just kind of blow off steam and unwind a little bit and allow yourself to get outside of your normal thought patterns to let your brain decompress. It's a simplistic game, but it makes the most of what it does, and it doesn't miss anywhere. There's a demo available if you'd like to try it out. The next game here, Picross S Genesis and Master System Edition, this one really surprised me because I didn't expect to enjoy it as much as I do. Picross is... it's kind of hit and miss for me. Sometimes I love it, sometimes I hate it, but this game, it's just awesome. It doesn't make me feel stupid like Sudoku does. I, I, I mean, it does make me feel dumb, to be clear. I'm really bad at this game, but not to the level Sudoku does. I feel stupid when I play Sudoku, but this one... I just feel like I want to beat the level, so I'll try again if I fail. And I think why this one works for me at the end of the day is, again, it's just the puzzling. It's putting something together and trying to figure out what the picture is. And the beauty of this game is that there's such a variety of levels to try out that if you're wide awake, you can play one of the gigantic levels to try and solve it, or if you're tired, you can play one or a few of the smaller levels to try and solve those instead. And it allows you to kind of unwind and unpack, all with the bonus of having pictures of your favorite Genesis and Master System characters or iconography to discover. This is a great game. And it's dirt cheap. It's 10 bucks. It's not bright and flashy. It's not over the top. Just simple, relaxing gameplay. Now, I've talked about Wingspan on the channel in the past, and this is one of the most relaxing games I've ever played. This is the digital version of a landmark tabletop card game, and it's about bird watching. It doesn't get much more relaxing than that. And I think if you play the game and you sit down with it, you're going to take in the watercolor inspired visuals of the four environments you're able to place birds in, as well as the gorgeous renders of the birds with their simple animations, the subdued and relaxing music, and the ambient sounds of the birds each having their own call recorded. It's just so immersive and calming. You feel like you're in nature. It's a deep breath game. It's a perfect rendition of this board game. Nothing it does, it does poorly. I know for a lot of folks, tabletop games aren't their thing, and they might not want to play one on their Switch, but I do encourage you to check this one out. It's one of my favorite games, and it's got brand new DLC available that adds even more birds and awesome gameplay to the mix. One of my most played games on the Switch and Steam is Stardew Valley. I adore Stardew Valley. It's a beautifully simple farming simulator with gorgeous visuals, fantastic sound and music, and some of the most calming gameplay out there. You inherit your grandfather's farm, and you abandon the rigors of the city in order to move to the calming world of Stardew Valley. You'll plant crops, mine, explore, attend town festivals, and build relationships with the residents of the town. 
It's a rare magical game that is so wonderful and easy to play, but my favorite part about it, and the thing I find most rewarding, is it has a built-in timer, with a day and night cycle with limited stamina for your character, so unwinding with the game is just a natural fit. You're going to calm down as you complete your night chores on the farm, and drift off to dreamland with your character. And if you're not asleep, queue up another day and run through that, because nothing takes really over a half hour to play through a day in this game. Now, I've talked about Islanders on the channel in the past, and I really can't stress enough how calming this game is to me. I think it's a perfect game. It's so simple in its idea that you need to meet a particular score as you place these buildings, but it's not stressful or overwhelming. It's just place it and go. The sounds in the game are subdued and calming. The visuals present a dreamy and hazy nondescript series of buildings and structures that you're able to place. And this isn't the kind of city or civilization planning game like Civ or SimCity, where you have to worry about a rampaging barbarian tribe eliminating your town or Bowser descending upon your city to mess up your power grid. It's just simple placement and planning to maximize your points as you play. It's a gorgeous game and it's truly rewarding, but not to the point where you'll feel the compulsion to keep playing or wanting to stay up in order to find the circus tent or the jewelry store. This is by far one of my favorite games on the Nintendo Switch, and I'm astonished that it's only $5. To me, it's worth so much more than that. Throwing it back a bit here to the Neo Geo Pocket Color, I love card fighter games. I love the strategy inherent in them. And while SNK vs. Capcom Card Fighters Clash might not seem relaxing at first blush, I actually do get a lot of calming elements out of this game. Visually, I think it's a very appealing title. There's a wide swath of colors because it is a Neo Geo Pocket Color game, but they're not in-your-face aggressive colors. Every card has a mustard yellow background. There's a lot of drab olive green colors on the screen. Nothing is over the top and in-your-face. And the gameplay... You know, I was considering putting Slay the Spire on here, but the combat in that is a bit more flashy than what you see with this one. It's got a ton of animations and cards flying all over the screen, and Card Fighters Clash is a lot more basic and subdued. It's not over the top, it's not flashy, and it's very easy to pick up and understand. It's familiar to me, like a warm blanket kind of game where everything is where it should be, and it just doesn't stress me out. I think of every game on this list, Paper Train might be the most visually pleasing because of its super gratifying pen and ink sketch-based graphics. I feel like it takes a lot of cues from a presentation perspective from Gunman Clive, but it uses those visuals to present a very clever puzzle game that does a whole lot with very little effort. The game has trains moving on screen at any given time, and it's your job to make sure they make it to the end of their route safely by stopping them at certain crossings by pressing the button that's associated to that stop. If the trains crash, you restart. It's simple, fun, and calming in its style and design. It's not a complex game, and it's not over the top. You just need to think a few steps ahead. And the beauty of the game needing you to think a few steps ahead is it challenges you mentally without spinning you up and making you stressed out. Levels are quick and plentiful. It's the perfect kind of game to wrap up your day. Next up is a classic game available on the NES online service, and it is one of my absolute favorite puzzle games of all time, and that's Dr. Mario. Now, I find this game to be incredibly relaxing, with the massive asterisk of I need to have it played with the sound turned off because I think the music is incredibly catchy. So, yeah, it's got to be on silent mode for me. It's one where the gameplay is incredibly simple. You drop pills, match colors, eliminate viruses, rinse, repeat. I think we can all understand that this is what the game is, and it doesn't need to be any more complex than that. Now, you can change that complexity by changing how many viruses are appearing or how fast things drop, but at the end of the day, I like to play at the simple, standard levels with slow speed to allow myself the ability to unwind at the end of the day and enjoy something I've been familiar with since I was a kid. I can just drop in, play a few levels, and unwind. Last but certainly not least is Fire Emblem Three Houses. Now, this one kind of goes against everything I've said previously, Game has bright, flashy colors, heavy combat, pops of animations that light the screen up, but Fire Emblem gets the nod because of the interstitial levels where you're in the monastery, and because of the support scenes. It's a story-heavy game with a ton of reading, and ever since I was a kid, reading has been the number one way for me to zonk out. Within an hour of opening a book, even if I was wide awake, I'm relaxed, calmed down, and I'm ready for bed. The combat does need to be discussed, though, because it's part of the overall puzzle theme of this video. It's all strategy. You need to be thinking ahead of where you want to move your troops, what their weapon durabilities are, what their strengths and weaknesses are. It exerts brain power, which helps wear you out a bit more than just something as simple as a platformer. I think there's something to be said for the story as well being a bit heavy, and it's not a terribly funny game, unless of course you're playing as the Golden Deer. But the other two houses, the Blue Lions and the Black Eagles, are a lot more serious and less lighthearted than other games on this list or that other folks might play. And if you're the kind of person who likes to queue up things on Netflix before you go to bed, I think this is the kind of game you might dig. 
10 games, 10 fantastic ways for you to unwind at the end of your day. These are all different types of games for me that allow my brain to kind of decompress a little bit and just get the thoughts out and just allow me to relax. Let me know in the comments down below what your favorite decompression game is. I know for a lot of folks that's Animal Crossing New Horizons and there's nothing wrong with that. Just for me, it got to be a chore and that's the last thing I want to do right before bed. So these games are ones where I can kind of unplug a little bit and just let my mind go. And I think they're great for unwinding at the end of the day. But I do want to hear from you. Let me know what your favorite games are. Please hit like, please subscribe down below if you're new around here. Just happen to stumble across the channel. And hey, if you really dig the work I do, consider becoming a monthly Patreon sponsor like the awesome people you're seeing on screen right now. Patrons get access to ad-free videos before everyone else for as little as a donation of $1 a month. And if you really enjoy the work I do here on the channel, consider picking up some of my merchandise at squarepegsyt.com. Shirts, hats, masks, you name it, it's over there with awesome Squarepegs branding. Until next time, folks, I've been Jay. Appreciate you spending a little bit of time with me today. Be sure to check out these videos up here with other top 10 lists that I've done on the Nintendo Switch. And remember to play more games, stay square, and take care. I'll talk to you soon.